Hello and welcome to K&K Play D&D. This is the first K, the Keith. And I'm the second K, Karin. And this is the Seabrook Mokana story arc, episode number 11. This one only gets longer. This particular episode was very emotional for me. I cried a lot when I was editing the little bit of it that I edited. This episode is brought to you by death. <laughs> Let's get those dice rolling. Previously on K and K play D and D. What they don't warn you about when you become a property holder and a landlord is all the people whose lives are suddenly in your hands. Well, the chain is gone, the bay here is gone, and so are six of our companions. We carry them back to the keep and begin to prepare a memorial. So it is just after you guys have returned to Blue Sea Keep. The, the bodies of the fallen have been taken to be taken care of. I want to go through the reactions and how each of you are dealing and processing at the moment. Great. Um, we're going to start with nowheres. You have gone back to the Kensai training area. Right. Uh, because that's where you have been spending your time. It's, it's become your space. Well, and I also I want to check in with Brother Oak when he's done and so on, because these were, some of the people who died were people that he and I trained with. These are his comrades. So I'm, I'm gonna wanna check in with him, see how he's doing, check in with myself, see how I'm doing. So when you first get there, there is no one in there. Yeah. No. It is just you. That's understandable. And it's probably a couple hours before someone comes in. You're probably going through your own martial training, meditation, and exercise, and all that. Just a, a lot of a lot of drills, a lot of push-ups, sit-ups, basic body weight, like just trying to sweat, mm-hmm. just trying to exhaust myself. Yeah. From the doorway, you hear someone side the door open, and the sound of feet coming in. I look over. It's it's Brother Oak, and um, he he's changed. He's washed a bit. He I haven't even done that. You haven't done that. He doesn't have his weapons on him. Do you want to do an insight or anything? No, I'll just ask him directly. Uh-huh. I'm dripping sweat and disgusting, so I grab a towel and kind of wipe off my face and, hey. How you doing, boy? I was about to ask you the same thing. I asked you first. I'm okay. Yeah? I'll be okay. I'm, um, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> he, he, his face splits into a smirk. Thank you. Uh, given where I come from, I'm probably the best off because this sort of thing happens. But, uh, thank you. They were, uh, they were good folk all of them. If there's anything that I can do, you'll let me know, right? Of course. It's probably going to be bashing at each other. I can stand up to that. Yeah, I can stand up for that. So can I. But, uh, not today. Understood. Uh, you are an absolute mess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, do this for me. Wash. <laughs> that, that good, huh? Wash yourself. And then, when we gather tonight, uh, I don't know how to say this to a man like you or me, uh, dress like a normal person, out of respect. You mean no armor? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah understood. Okay. Different sort of funeral rites out here than I'm used to. Same here. But uh, they're still good in the, what they are. Okay. Do you know what time they're going to be doing things? Oh, you'll know. You'll know. All right. Well, yeah. Yes, sir, I, I will. All right. And uh, Oak tends to the rooms as you leave. Okay. Frankie and Tara. In the the mess of things, Tara had been um, holding on to Frankie, talking for her. As they're directing people mm-hmm. and um, getting things set up, Frankie takes like a fistful of, of Tara's tunic and just, we need to talk to Brother Tumbleion. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, um, your office or his? I, I, um, uh, let's do, let's do yours. Okay, okay. So they go up to her office, mm-hmm. and um, Tar has one of the clerks called Brother Tumble Lion. So after probably half an hour, Tumble Lion comes in as Tumble Lion as ever. It, he looks 
unflappable. He looks as put together as he's always been. You cannot tell that something has happened to his uh, monastery here. Mm. He walks in and gives the two of you a little smile and comes up to you, Frankie, and is offering to give you a hug without I, saying anything. I will accept, but only briefly. Yep. And he gives you a brief hug, pats your head slightly in a comforting manner. Something kind of like what your uncle used to do. Yeah. But of course, you know, Tumble Lion doesn't know your uncle, but it could be comforting. And he steps back and uh, looks at the two of you. Um, yes, uh, what, what, uh, there's much to discuss, uh, please. Yes, um, of course. <sighs> please sit down. And he folds himself into a chair. I was realizing that I have no experience with your remembrances here. He puts a hand gently on yours on your lap. It will be taken care of. Do not concern yourself about that. We have ways and traditions, and you will you will learn them tonight. Tonight? Yes. That quickly. All right. Um, we are always ready to commemorate new life, marriages, and death at a moment's notice, given life. Right. Um, is there... What, what can I do as keeper of the manor? What can I do to assist... You will be present, of course. Of course, yes. Of course. As keeper of a manor, what do you feel like you want to contribute? I don't... Is there usually some sort of memorial, or do I say something, or what do people expect? It has been different with every keeper here. Some have never taken part in our services. Some have donated funds in memoriam. Yes. But I, the only funds that I have are those that already belong to the keep. You could say something. You could dedicate something. You could, you could plant a tree. Um, so you're saying it's up to me? It is up to you. I will endorse whatever you feel you can do. I appreciate that. And I appreciate that you are here and you are feeling. Of course I'm feeling. Lest you forget, two of those who died today were the trainers that you set for me. Yes. This evening, you say? This evening. I will give it some thought. Is there anything that you expect of me in the meantime? Take care of yourself. Self-care is important as well. Understood. But you, you defeated the creature, yes? It's alive, but the mind control has been broken. <sighs> Thank the builders. I wouldn't say that it was a, a vain sacrifice, if that's what you're concerned about. I am not concerned about that. I have learned much about you since your time here, and you are not someone I would put to do such vain sacrifices like this. I trusted River Sky. I trusted his judgment that this would be enough people, and we're both paying for it. I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming myself for not doing a more thorough investigation. <sighs> monsters are... Monsters are, are difficult. They're unpredictable, Frankie. You can never predict because they're unpredictable. And wars and battles are the same way. Not to belittle what you are feeling and what has happened today, but they knew the risks. They knew there was a chance. I imagine you have preparations to do. I do, but this is also a preparation. This is also a ministry I can do for you. I'll be all right. I'm sure there are people who need you right now. I've got people to help me, so. He looks at Tara, looks at you. He nods his head, stands up, gives you a respectful bow, and sees himself out. You should rest. We both should rest. How can I rest, Tara? How can I possibly? <laughs> These were my people, and we didn't even kill the beast. Maybe not, but, uh, but it did give us some valuable information. You mean about the dragons? Yeah, about that. Were you gonna tell me that Alessansko showed up in a dream to you? Maybe eventually. Why? When? When was it? Last night. And, and did you tell anyone? 
I mean, I don't imagine you'd probably tell Runt, but I mean, did you tell Nowheres? Did you tell Thumble Lion? Did you, did you tell anyone? The morning before going to fight a bay here? No, of course I didn't. Who would I have told? And to what end? I mean, he knows we're here. He's going to come eventually. But this morning wasn't the time to worry about it. What do you mean he knows we're here? He told me the exact name of this village. He knows we're here. And he knows who I am. He knows both of the names I've used here. So that dream about... Th that dream that Anna had about Jolg and Fjord Talker... Yes, I imagine they both work for Alessandsko. That's my theory, anyway. Tara lowers himself down next to her. <laughs> <laughs> Heads both kind of rested back, just staring at nothing. This town can't handle a dragon attack. This town can't handle a Behir attack. The Behir said there was a blue dragon. Yeah, and a silver one. What do you make of that? I have no idea. I mean, I think that we would know if there were dragons running around, wouldn't we? Um, I mean, no. No, not necessarily. What? Why? Uh, dragons can take humanoid form, Frankie. They what? Frankie, this is pretty common knowledge. Dragons could take humanoid form. They could be anyone. Oh my god. Is there a way to tell? Only in the magic that they use, I guess. Primeval awareness, Tara. Do I have that? I do you have do. that. It's a class feature, but you would be using a spell slot to do it. Uh, give me a second. And Tara sits back and uh, he allows his awareness to extend, closes his eyes and takes a few deep breaths and uh, lets his awareness expand. Okay. Uh, does he sense anything? Your, your awareness expands past your body past the room, through the keep, and into um, the lands around, and going into a mist taking up an entire mile around you. And as you concentrate, feeling the land, feeling the creatures there, you do feel the presence of a dragon within a mile of you. Just one, though. Just one. Is, uh, is the town within a mile? No. The no. town is just on the edge. Okay. But I can feel one. You can feel one dragon. Can I tell how close it is? It's within a mile. Well, <laughs> within that mile of range. Yeah, it's uh, one of them anyway is, is very close. How close are we talking? Like somewhere on the property. I would say if you want to take between five and ten minutes I could, of deep concentration on this, um, I would give you, I would allow you to find it closer to you. Okay, um, so yeah, let's do that. Tar tells her, yeah, just give me a few more minutes yep. and I'll try to pinpoint. And so they sort of just lean back into each other, you know, shoulders mm -hmm. slumped, and uh, Tar closes his eyes to concentrate, and Frankie just waits. Just waits, all right. Ten minutes pass and you feel the draconic presence is within the walls of the keep. Holy crap. And again, you cannot tell what color it is, who it is, their motivations or anything, but you just know that there is a draconic presence within the keep's walls. Uh, the bay here said silver and blue. There is a big ass difference between those two things. There is. You also don't know if it's an ancient or a worm. Firmling. Right, like no idea. We are screwed if it is a blue dragon. Inside the keep, we are absolutely screwed. Uh, I... Well, Behir also said that only Frankie smelled of the blue dragon. Mm -hmm. So it means it's somebody that I have not had a lot of contact with, but she has, probably. If it's the blue. Right, that's what I mean, yeah. It also said you. It smelled of the silver. Yeah. A little bit, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, that's, that's as far as I can go. I'm starting to get a headache. Mm -hmm. My eyes hurt even though they've been closed. So I, uh, I open my eyes, take a deep breath. I feel a little woozy. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to doing this. <laughs> no, you're um, not. You have not used this trait since coming to Patchwork. Right. And, uh, I turn to Frankie and she's asleep on my shoulder. Mm. <laughs> so I, uh, I decide not to wake her. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll, I'll give her half an hour. I'll give okay. her I'll give her some time, and uh, promptly fall asleep with her. Okay. 
So you're you're sleeping. Um, roll me a perception check in your sleep. Well, what? Which one? Well, okay. Which one? Both. Why not? Okay. Um, let's do this. 18. Nine. Uh, 15. <laughs> Dad? Uh, not now, buddy. I'm sleeping. Y- yeah. With Francesca? <sighs> I thought you two mm-hmm. hated each other. Oh, what time is it? I don't know. Uh, hey, buddy. And as you look around, you find yourself in a foresty campsite. Okay. You're sitting on your bedroll. Frankie is curled up next to you. And Kale, in an ethereal-like form, is across from a very low-burning fire. Okay. Uh, Frankie's had a tough day. I, I kind of heard. Heard? I met someone who who's allowing me to do this. To do... To do what? Speak to you. Try to find you, Dad. Oh, this is real. Dad, yes. What did you <laughs> think this was? It's, it's all a dream. It's all a dream. No, Dad, this is a real dream. I'm I'm back home. Yeah. In a campsite. Yeah. With last breath and peace and glory. They're asleep right now. Okay. And this stranger is allowing me to do this, to speak to you. What's, uh... And inside check real quick. Go for it. I just, I want to make sure that it actually is Kale. Mm-hmm. Uh, 17. It's Kale, all the way down to his freckles okay. and scar by his left ear. Like, you can't be too cautious when there are dragons running around. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the name of the person who's helping you do this? Ksai. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, Frankie's had a rough day. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Uh, you look taller. You've been growing. A, a little bit. You look tired. I am. So you're with the tieflings? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you and uh, Nowhere's disappeared, they came to me. That's took nice me in. Uh, last, last breath kind of led the charge because she, she knew why. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's good people. She's good people. Yeah. Um. Bit rough, but she's. No, she's she's a delicate flower. Um. You met you met Kasai. Yeah. How? He and this other guy in a funny hat walked into our camp one day. Just walked right in. Walked right in. There was, like, snowflakes and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar. And told me you were in patchwork. Yep. And you were helping them. I hope. You can do it, Dad. Thanks. Uh, you eating enough? Yeah. Do you getting enough sleep? Try. Yeah. Yeah, you close to the war front, or...? The, the horde is pushing towards us, but not as fast as it has in the past. So what's the plan for you? Because you know those tieflings are going to be on the front line. I've signed up to be a scout. Dad, I can help them. I just think you're a little young for it, that's all. I know you're good at it. You're, you're very good at it. I just... You're a little young. Dad, I'm the same age as you when you you joined your factions. Yeah, mine, mine was compulsory. Yours isn't. I chose to join. I know. Dad, I can't keep this up much longer tonight. No, I'm just glad to see you. Uh, I'm glad to see you. Glad you're well. I'm glad you're well and you're taking care of Francesca. Somebody's got to. You're you're the best person for it. Yeah, she doesn't take care of herself, so. We we learned that when we first met her. Yeah. Did we? 
Yeah. We, we found her lying in the forest, bleeding out. Did we? She tried to kill me, you tried to kill her. Huh. She tried to kill you? It was an honest misunderstanding, Dad. I woke her up. I don't... I don't remember this. That's okay. She probably want to see you. He shakes Frankie's shoulder. <laughs> Frankie has been listening for a while. <laughs> yeah. She pushes his hand away and mm-hmm. sits up. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm all right. Kasai, huh? Yeah. He is a piece of work, isn't he? Yeah. So, Ro, you met Ro? Once, yeah. How long ago? Um, about a week ago. Okay, so, buddy, I need you to be really careful about something. Listen to me, all right? So, Kasai, he walks through people's dreams. He pulls people from plane to plane, okay? he's He's got some sort yeah. of ability to do that. Here's the thing. People can follow him. Okay. So... If somebody comes into your dreams who makes you uncomfortable and you don't recognize them, you shut it down immediately and you move. Do you hear me? You're talking about the evil dragon guy. I am, yes. Okay. So, if he shows up, you get out. Do you understand? As far as you can. Yeah. Just keep moving. Okay, okay. You're too young to be a scout. Rolls his eyes. You are a young man. You should listen to your father. <laughs> I'm good at it. And the I'm alliance good at needs killing it. people, too. That doesn't mean that I started at too late an age. There are things that you can be too young to do, buddy. The Alliance needs help right now. Everyone needs help, Kale. Who do you report to? Who's your officer? Last breath. Oh, damn it. Well, there's no helping it. She wouldn't know she doesn't have kids. All right, you listen to me. You be extra careful out there. You be as wily and slippery as you possibly can be. You just be like a little snake or something. He gets a little smile. Of course. And Tara, do something about your son. He's making me anxious. If there's anything that you think that I can do from another plane, I mean, like, I'm all ears to your ideas. Kale, honey, please be careful. I will. I have to go now. But you guys be careful, too. Okay? And if you feel unsafe, I would much rather not see you in a dream than have you come and risk something. Okay? Yeah. Take care of the others, too. I miss them as well. We'll do our best. Yeah, we'll do our best, buddy. Tell Runt I miss his goulash. I will. Okay. I gotta go. All right. And it fades. You guys wake up in Frankie's office. (sighs) He's a good kid. Yeah. Um, not to freak you out, but there's a dragon in the building. Oh. Do you know which one? No, that's beyond my magic. I, I'm not, I'm not that good. (laughs) Well, there are only 75 options. Yeah, that's, that's one way to look at it. You don't think that maybe he was smelling the wyvern? Miloches? Uh, no. No, I don't think that was it. How's the bell tower coming? Uh, uh, last time I checked it was going well. Okay. I hate to say this, but until we figure out who it is, we can't trust anyone. We're going to a funeral, and we can trust no one. Yeah, it, uh, kind of sucks. Yeah. 
All right, well, um, we both need a bath, so I'll see you later. <laughs> That's a good ending for them. Front. Yeah. Uh, in the hubbub of everyone returning, you were able to slip off with Kyle mm-hmm. without being noticed. Mm-hmm. And you've made your way to one place that you've always felt safe within the keep, the gardens. Yeah. You like the gardens. Yeah. Kyle, buddy, that was weird, and I didn't like it. I wasn't able to do as much as I should have been able to do. And and I wasn't able to heal people the way that I should have been able to do, Kyle. He, like, rubs behind his ears and... Mm-hmm. Kyle flops to the ground next to him and just pushes against wanting more. What am I going to do? If I can't heal people, and if I can't help protect them, I'm just a guy with a hand axe. I wonder if this is what John was talking about. Uh, you want to give me a quick perception check? A uh, six. All right. Which makes sense. Yeah. Emotional distress, he's not paying attention. So, Runt, as you're sitting in the garden with Kyle, your best doggy buddy, um, a hand comes up and rests on your head in a very caring and familial type way, kind of petting you a bit. I look up. Who is it? It's Brother Anger. Hi. Hello, Brother Runt. What, what is, what is going on? They here killed some of us. I, I saw, I've heard. Yeah. And you, you have come over here. Yeah. I don't like people dying. No. I died once. Before I came here. Yes. I don't like it. I, uh... When's the funeral? Uh, Tonight. (laughs) Tonight. Yeah, I should, um... I should get ready. Brother Runt, is something else bothering you? Is six people dying not enough reason to be bothered? (sighs) Fair. It is a large number. It is. They were really nice. They were. They were my brothers and sisters here. I will miss them fiercely. They just got blown up and just charred Uh, by lightning. Yes. And I've seen Tar uses lightning, but not like that. It was bigger and scarier and destructive. And it wasn't its fault either. It wasn't? No, somebody was making it do it. It had a big chain on, like the one that Joel has, that made Norris hit Tarver. Oh. Those chains make people do things they don't want to do, and the bay here had one of those around its neck. It wasn't its fault. I have heard of chains like that. They and are he, nasty. And then he talked with Freaky and Tarver, and they wouldn't tell us what they said. Sorry. And then they let it go. They just let it go. It killed six people and they just let it go. Which I understand, like, it wasn't its fault that it killed them. It didn't know what it was doing, but it didn't, it didn't apologize or anything. And we gave it cows to eat. We gave it food and it didn't even apologize for killing 
for people. Brother Anger kneels down and wraps his long arms around you, Runt, pulling you tight. And I've never, I've never seen Frankie scared. It. She doesn't get scared. No, it is hard when we see strong people scared. Two of the people who died are the people who have been training her so that she can do her job better, so that she can fulfill the contract that she made. And now they're dead. Brother River Sky and Sister Flower Wind. Yeah. Joyous yeah. Oh, souls. They were just... They were just trying to do... Gloria told them that Samick wanted them to do, and now they're dead. It is <laughs> painful. It's, it's stupid. It shouldn't happen like that. No? No. <laughs> and they won't tell me what... They won't tell me what it said. Because... Because I'm... I'm not smart like them. And it's not that I expect them to tell me, but... You are a very kind soul, Runt. They're probably protecting me. I know that. I know that. I'm not mad. I just wish I wasn't so useless. Useless, Runt. You are not useless. You have skills, you have caring, you have feelings. Those, those are not useless. They won't do people much good against a lightning animal. Or against a dragon. <sighs> what do you want to be able to do? I want to be able to protect my friends. Duh. To keep people from dying. Yeah. And how? How do you want to do this? I have magic. You used your magic today. Did you not? I tried. Did the, the creature escape your magic? Avoid it? so nice to be somewhere where we weren't fighting all the time. Where we didn't have to worry about bad guys on street corners. That I just... I forgot. For a while. The, I, I can understand. Nice to find peace. Or the illusion of it. Uh, yeah. Frankie never got caught up, though, did she? She's been working on the defenses and everything since she got here. She never forgot. She is wily, that one. That's not about being wily, it's about protecting people. She was able to protect people. I'm just not very good at it. Listen, um, thanks. Thanks. 
should go. I should go. I'm gonna go find Frankie. Or Tara. All right. I will be, I will be here if you want to talk. I appreciate that. You're welcome. I, I appreciate you, Runt. I appreciate you teaching me which mushrooms aren't poisonous. <laughs> You're welcome. I will be here for you. Yeah, could you take Kyle on a walk? Of course. Thanks. Come, Kyle. And I go inside. Okay. Uh, come in. Hi, Frankie. Oh, buddy, come here. It's not your fault, okay? It's not your fault. Why do you assume that's what's bothering me? It's what's bothering me, so... Sorry, uh, what can I do for you? I want you to tell me what the bay here said that made you so scared. What that made me scared? Frankie, you're a good actress, but you're not that good. I've known you for a while now. And I can tell when you're scared. Um... I've got to do my hair. Come on inside. And we can talk while I'm doing that. Um, how are you doing? Not very good, but I think that's to be expected. How are you doing? Um, pretty crappy. Yeah, pretty crappy. So, Behir's, uh, can smell dragons. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. And is that what scared you? Yeah. Yeah, apparently, um, apparently there are a couple dragons that I have had contact with without even knowing it. One that I did know. Alessandro showed up in a dream last night. Oh, Rund, honey, don't look like that. I was gonna tell you eventually. I just was gonna wait. It didn't seem important. This How morning. could it not be important, Frankie? <sighs> oh, all right, fine. I wouldn't really expect you to tell me anyway. But you said there were a couple others. I. Yeah, a uh, silver and a blue, apparently. The Behir could smell the silver dragon on both me and Tarver, and could smell a red dragon, that's all Asansko I'm assuming, on me, and a blue dragon. Like, I'm assuming, the, uh, what do you call it when, like, a person takes dragon blood and, like, transforms themselves? Do you remember what that that's called? That's a thing? Yeah, apparently it's a thing. When Nowheres and Tara and I went to the end, we met a blue dragon lady. I don't know what she was, but uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it just made me remember that Tara said that the blue ones are generally, um, you know, not folks you want to spend a lot of time with. Pretty pretty evil, pretty dangerous. And you think there's a connection between that and the one that's here? Well, my hope is just that there was a blue dragon in my dream that I didn't notice, you know? I'm hoping that's all it was. When Taro, he did a little magic and uh, he didn't notice, he didn't notice a second dragon, just the one. Even one dragon is a problem. Yeah, 
Yeah, it is. Um, particularly because apparently it's somewhere in the keep. It's already infiltrated. So it's probably somebody that we know. Probably, yeah. So I need you to be doubly careful who you're talking to and what you're saying because we can't trust anyone. Oh, you mean because dragons can take humanoid forms? Yeah, how does everybody know about that but me? It's pretty common knowledge, Frankie. I would have thought that you would have... Well, never mind. So don't trust anyone. That's the moral of the story, right? I'm afraid so, yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Was Alessandro so scary? He's terrifying. And he knows where we are. Oh. So that's why you've been so worried about the defenses of the city and things. Oh, Rand. <laughs> if Alessandro comes here, he won't even be able to tell that there was a village. There's nothing we can do. Except pretend. People function better if they think there's hope. At least then they won't despair. Why don't we just evacuate? Rantani, this is people's livelihood. They've lived here for generations. The fishing and all of that, like... People won't leave that just because somebody comes to threaten. You've heard them talk. They think that the nobles and all of us outsiders don't understand and we're just doing our thing and it doesn't affect them. That's what all of the conversations with the village elders have been. Yeah, you have a good point. I haven't actually met any of them yet. Maybe let's keep it that way. Okay. Is there anything that I can do? You can learn how to make really good healing potions, okay? Yeah, I can do that. Only one of them blew up the other day. They said that was pretty good for a first timer. Yeah, it is pretty good for a first timer. I had three blow up the first time I tried making healing potions. Oh, so that's something that you already do. Um, have done. You know, back before we came here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, your hair looks nice. Thanks, buddy. I'm gonna go. Okay. I'll see you later. Yeah. Yeah, bye. Oh. Well, Runty. Uh, any other touch-ups with your people? Reactions and stuff uh, between your people? I don't know. I'm so dehydrated now. <laughs> uh, um, Nowheres is gonna, you know, get bathed, get washed. He's gonna, you know, trim the beard and shave a bit and shave his head fresh, you know, mm -hmm. the sides of the mohawk. So he looks like, like, on point. Shine his horns. I mean, like, I don't know that he'd go that far. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna touch up. And it feels very weird for him not to be polishing his armor for a funeral. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but he, uh, he pulls out the shirt that Frankie gave him. You know, the absolutely ugly one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the best material that he owns, so mm -hmm. he's going to put that one on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the eyesore that is nowhere's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, uh, and I think, th yeah, the rest of them going to just clean up and, uh, and get ready. Okay. After several hours, it's nearing evening. Um, 
the main yard of the keep has been transformed. It's going to be an outdoor setting with that many and how it has affected the keep and the, the abbey. Uh, benches have been brought out and set in sections facing towards the east and the coming night. There are six simple wooden boxes that have been set there in parallel lines, all facing east in front of the benches. The walls surrounding the yard are draped in heavy cloth, blue, green, red, silver, and gold. Candles are on every horizontal surface except for the benches. The monks of the Blue Sea Keep have gathered in silence, leaving a bench in the front for Lady Frankie, Sir Tarer, Master Nowheres, and Brother Runt. Oak, Zook, Guy, Jax are there too, at the end of the bench set aside for them. Tumble Lion is the last one to arrive, and as he comes through the main aisle of the benches, he's shaking hands and hugging the brethren. He comes up to the front bench, and he hugs each one in turn. He says nothing as he does it, and once everyone is situated, sitting again, Tumble Lion moves in front, standing between the benches and the caskets. A hush falls over the yard. My sisters, my brothers, we gather in the waning light of the day, underneath evening sky, as the awakening stars embrace the dual blessings of the twins, of Tath and Teth, life and death, the keepers of journeys. Together we are held by Ro, who ushers in change to the world, bringing the seasons year after year, seasons of harvest and seasons of life. With them, we ask Jot, celebrator of joy, dreams, and art of life, to comfort us in the passing of our six brothers and sisters today, who grants us the chance to celebrate the marks they've left on our own lives and the lives that they lived. To the builders, we entrust their eternal souls to usher our beloved Oust, Flower Wind, Kenta, River Sky, Shan, and Trag to the next plane of life. There's a moment of silence here as each person gathered remembers the touches of the fallen left on their lives. There is no death without life, just as there is no life without death. Tonight, under the watchful gaze of patchwork stars, we shall eat and remember and celebrate the lives and deaths of our departed brothers and sisters. He looks through the sky, looks back at everyone. At the toll of the midnight hour, the vigil of traditions will begin. It is our way of ushering them to the next place. It is our way of remembering and casting their memories to our hearts. Brother Oak has requested to begin watching over them until the sky begins to brighten. Then in turn, the following hours will be shared as it has been done, as it will be done. Prayers, songs, meditations of all our schoolings here are accepted within the vigil watch. If anyone has something they wish to say, this is the time you may come up and say it. Or you may speak in your hearts and he steps back, bowing his head. Frankie knows that she should get up. Mm-hmm. She also knows she wouldn't be able to speak yet. Mm. So she, she just sits with her hands clenched very, very tightly in her lap, kind of rocking back and forth a little bit. Uh, nowheres notices mm-hmm. and stands. Okay. He's had the opportunity to speak at many funerals. <laughs> yes. And though he wasn't close to any of these people, he also knows that, like, you gotta start with the right tone. Mm -hmm. I stand here today because of the gifts and sacrifices of our brothers and sisters who lie behind me. The life that is given to somebody by somebody else, this borrowed time, is precious. And I thank them, each of them, for lending me another hour and thank them for this precious gift. I will treasure it, and I hope that I may live in a way that honors them. That they will be proud of the days that they have granted me. And he sits back down. 
Brother Oak rises, claps you on the shoulder, nowheres, as you two pass. And he stands in front of the group. And at this point, you notice he's not dressed as a monk right now. He's dressed as an orc raider. Mm-hmm. You all know I, uh, I didn't start life here. Pretty evident on me. But uh, this is my life. You are my tribe. Because of Trag, I, uh, I found my place here. I am one of you, you are one of me, and uh, you're, you're, you're my family. And they're, he looks at the caskets, they're my family too. Nods his head, thank you, and heads back to his seat. Frankie is still tense as a wound spring and tears spilling over onto her cheeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tara puts his hand over her wrist and squeezes and stands. The Lady Francesca du Marat offers her deepest condolences to the family of the fallen, of which she considers herself one. Arrangements are being made to reconstruct a building for the purpose of healing potions and other healing arts on these grounds in the name of the fallen and in their memory. She welcomes your suggestions, but mostly asks you to join her in remembrance. And sits back down, and Frankie is just destroyed. (laughs) (laughs) Just destroyed, just snot and tears and the whole business. And so Tara just kind of puts an arm around around again and just lets her her be the mess that she needs to be for Mm -hmm. a while. Uh, from the back, a figure comes forward with um, silver hair and deep blue skin, Brother Inger. He stands in front and he takes a moment, hands up in his sleeves. We, uh, we celebrate uh, life here. We, we work art with the body. Uh, like Brother Oak, I, I came from other life before here. Like, many of you have found your place here. I have found my place here. We are travelers through life, and we meet other travelers as we travel. And each one marks us, gives us new story, new experiences. I thank each of these six for the stories they have given me, the experiences I've shared from cooking to cleaning to cleaning out an overfilled latrine (laughs) that earns him a few chuckles. (laughs) You remember that time. I thank them for that. And I thank them for what they have done and what they did. And I thank them for letting us come together here to support each other as they go into their next journey, as they go where we have not yet gone. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. And he heads back to the back. One by one, other monks come up sharing little stories, little pieces that these six have done in their lives. And after maybe 45 minutes of this, different stories, different snippets, seeing how the lives here in the Blue Sea Keep are intertwined, interconnected, and wonderful, the wonderful. (laughs) Tumble Lion steps forward, obviously calming his own emotions. You can see there are tear streaks in his fur. My brothers, my sisters, my family and friends, thank you for everything you have shared this evening. And together, We will share one last feast. We are going to partake in a feast of remembrance, of joy and celebration. We will eat their favorite foods. Yes, there will be some things that we may not like that they liked, (laughs) such as very, very fine approximation of elvish dishes, but uh, we will eat them in remembrance of, of them, and we will celebrate everything. And we will celebrate our beloved who are going before us. 
and at the toll of midnight, the vigil will begin. Please eat and celebrate. And behind the gathering, there are tables laden with food, and uh, the feast will begin. Um, they all join in, of course. Mm-hmm. Nowhere's approaches Brother Oak. Mm-hmm. Uh, brother, it would be my honor if you would allow me to sit with you for one of the shifts. All right. It'd uh, be my pleasure to have you. Good. We can even spar if you want. <laughs> They'd probably get a kick out of that. Yeah, they would. Frankie has dried her eyes. She needed that one big flush of emotion mm-hmm. and uh, is now speaking for herself and describing plans for a building with big windows because uh, because Flower Wind always liked overlooking the gardens and River Sky always complained that there weren't enough views down towards the village. So the building will have big windows, lots of light, big drying racks for herbs, lots of workspace, many levels of basement to second floor. <laughs> like, she's, <laughs> she's got big plans. She's pitching it all. Yeah, and she's accepting other ideas. Oh, you know, colored stained glass, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. for each of them, and, and so on, things like, things like that. Yeah. And Runt... Uh, pushes his food around his plate for a while so that it looks like he's eaten, and then heads inside and goes straight to the library and looks for books that can teach him spells. Okay. And he brings his spell book and his gold ink, okay. one, of, one of his jars of gold ink, with him. And there you have it. Another episode of K&K Play D&D is in the books. And that was episode 11 of the Seabrook Mokana story arc. That was sad. Yeah, it was. I'm not really okay. I'm sorry. But, you know, death happens sometimes. I know. If you are also not okay, you know how to share that with us. That's what social media is for. Or if you want to share your own story deaths and games, you can uh, reach out to us at KNK Play D&D at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And if you want to share what you think Frankie looked like when she was sad, draw me fan art. <laughs> Please. Music was written by me and the ambient tracks are from tabletopaudio.com. Keith, I'm so sad. Dare, 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 dare. I'm the first K, the Keith. I'm the second K, Karen, signing off. Thank you for listening and be, and be well. well.